The Blessed John van Ruysbroek Dutch, Jan van Roosbroek, pronounced Jane van 1293 or 1294 to December 1381, was one of the Flemish mystics. Some of his main literary works include The Kingdom of the Divine Lovers, The Twelve Beguines, The Spiritual Espousals, A Mirror of Eternal Blessedness, The Little Book of Enlightenment, and The Sparkling Stone. Some of his letters also survive, as well as several short sayings recorded by some of his disciples, such as Jan van Leeuwen. He wrote in the Dutch vernacular, the language of the common people of the Low Countries, rather than in Latin, the language of the church liturgy and official texts, in order to reach a wider audience. Life Topic. Until his ordination John had a devout mother, who brought him up in the Catholic faith, of his father we know nothing. John's surname, Van Roosbroek, is not a surname in the modern sense but a toponym that refers to his native hamlet, modern-day Ruisbroek near Brussels compare John of Salisbury or Democritus of Abdera. At the age of eleven he left his mother, departing without leave or warning, to place himself under the guidance and tuition of his uncle, Jan Hinkert, a canon regular of St. Gujuels, Brussels. Hinkert was living according to his apostolic views with a fellow canon, Frank van Codenberg. This uncle provided for Ruisbroek's education with a view to the priesthood. In due course, John was presented with a prebend in St. Gujuels Church, and ordained in 1318. His mother had followed him to Brussels, entered a baganage there, and died shortly before his ordination. Priest in Brussels From 1318 until 1343 Ruisbroek served as a parish priest at St. Gudula. He continued to lead, together with his uncle Hinkert and Van Codenberg, a life of extreme austerity and retirement. At that time the Brethren of the Free Spirit were causing controversy in the Netherlands and one of them, a woman named Heilwige Blomarden, was particularly active in Brussels, propagating her beliefs chiefly by means of popular pamphlets. Ruisbroek responded with pamphlets also written in the native tongue Middle Dutch. Nothing of these treatises remains. The controversy had a permanent effect on Ruisbroek. His later writings bear constant reference, direct and indirect, to the heretical views expressed in these times, and he always wrote in the country's native language, chiefly with a view to counteracting these writings which he viewed as heretical. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Priest in Gronendal. The desire for a more retired life, and possibly also the persecution which followed Ruisbroek's attack on Blomarden, induced Ruisbroek, Jan Hinkert d. 1350, and Frank van Codenberg d. 1386, to leave Brussels in 1343 for the hermitage of Gronendal, in the neighbouring Sonian forest, which was made over to them by John III, Duke of Brabant. The ruins of the monastery are still present in the forest of Soignes, but here so many disciples joined the little company that it was found expedient to organize into a duly authorized religious body. The hermitage was erected into a community of canons regular on 13 March 1349, and eventually it became the motherhouse of a congregation, which bore its name of Gronendal. Francis van Codenberg was appointed first provost, and Blessed John Ruiz broke prior. Hinkert refrained from making the canonical profession lest the discipline of the house should suffer from the exemptions required by the infirmities of his old age. He dwelt, therefore, in a cell outside the cloister and there a few years later died. This period, from his religious profession 1349 to his death 1381, was the most active and fruitful of Ruisbroek's career. During this time, his fame as a man of God, as a sublime contemplative and a skilled director of souls, spread beyond the bounds of Flanders and Brabant to Holland, Germany, and France. He had relations with the nearby Carthusian house at Hearn, and also with several communities of poor Clare Franciscans. We know that he had connections with the Friends of God in Strasbourg, and also that in about 1378 he was visited by Geert Groot, the founder of the Devotio Moderna. It is possible, though disputed, that John Toller came to see him. John died at Gronendal, aged 82, on 2 December 1381. Works <laughs> 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 <laughs>
In total, Ruizbroek wrote twelve books, seven epistles, two hymns and a prayer. All were written in Middle Dutch. Around 1340, Ruizbroek wrote his masterpiece, The Spiritual Espousals. The 36 surviving Dutch manuscripts, as well as translations into Latin and Middle High German, are evidence of the book's popularity. Some of the text was also translated into Middle English via the Latin translation as The Chastising of God's Children which was later printed by Wijnken de Word. Around the same time, he also wrote a short treatise, The Sparkling Stone, which was also translated into Middle English. Ruizbroek's most famous writings were composed during his time in Gronendal. His longest and most popular work, surviving today in 42 manuscripts, The Spiritual Tabernacle was begun in Brussels but finished at Gronendal, presumably early on in his time there. Two brief works, The Christian Faith an explanation of the creed and a treatise on the Four Temptations, also date from around the time of Ruizbroek's arrival in Gronendal. His later works include four writings to Margareta van Meerbeek, a Franciscan nun of Brussels. These are the seven enclosures C134650, the first of his seven surviving letters, the seven rungs C135960, and a mirror of eternal blessedness. Around 1363 the Carthusians at Hearn dispatched a deputation to Gronendal presenting Ruizbroek with questions on his first book, The Realm of Lovers. Ruizbroek went to Hearn to clarify his teaching, and afterwards put this in writing in his work The Little Book of Enlightenment. Thought Of Ruizbroek's works, the treatise The Seven Steps of the Ladder of Spiritual Love is the one that is currently most readily available. Of the various treatises preserved, the best known and the most characteristic is that entitled The Spiritual Espousals. It is divided into three books, treating respectively of the active, the interior, and the contemplative life. Literally, Ruizbroek wrote as the spirit moved him. He loved to wander and meditate in the solitude of the forest adjoining the cloister, he was accustomed to carry a tablet with him, and on this to jot down his thoughts as he felt inspired so to do. Late in life he was able to declare that he had never committed aught to writing save by the motion of the Holy Ghost. In none of his treatises do we find anything like a complete or detailed account of his system, perhaps, it would be correct to say that he himself was not conscious of elaborating any system. In his dogmatic writings he explains, illustrates, and enforces traditional teachings with remarkable force and lucidity. In his ascetic works, his favorite virtues are detachment, humility and charity. He loves to dwell on such themes as flight from the world, meditation upon the life, especially the passion of Christ, abandonment to the divine will, and an intense personal love of God. In common with most of the German mystics, Ruizbroek starts from divine matters before describing humanity. His work often then returns to discussing God, showing how the divine and the human are so closely united as to become one. He demonstrates inclinations towards Christian universalism in writing that, "...man, having proceeded from God is destined to return, and become one with him again." But here he is careful to clarify his position. There where I assert that we are one in God, I must be understood in this sense that we are one in love, not in essence and nature. Despite this declaration, however, and other similar saving clauses scattered over his pages, some of Ruizbroek's expressions are certainly rather unusual and startling. The sublimity of his subject matter was such that it could scarcely be otherwise. His devoted friend, Gerard Groot, a trained theologian, confessed to a feeling of uneasiness over certain of his phrases and passages, and begged him to change or modify them for the sake at least of the week. Later on, Jean Gerson and then Boswit both professed to find traces of unconscious pantheism in his works. But as an offset we may mention the enthusiastic commendations of his contemporaries, Groot, Johannes Thaler, Thomas A. Kempis, John of Schoenhoven, and in subsequent times of the Franciscan Henry van Herp, the Carthusians Denis and Laurentius Sirius, the Carmelite Thomas of Jesus, the Benedictine Louis de Blois, and the Jesuit Leonardus Lessius. Ernest Hello and especially Maurice Maeterlinck have done much to make his writings known. Ruizbroek was a powerful influence in developing United Nations Secretary General Dag Hammarskjöld's conception of spiritual growth through selfless service to humanity, as expressed in his book of contemplations called Vagmarken Markings. Ruizbroek insisted that the soul finds God in its own depths, and noted three stages of progress in what he called the spiritual ladder of Christian attainment: one, the active life; two, the inward life; three, the contemplative life. 
He did not teach the fusion of the self in God, but held that at the summit of the ascent the soul still preserves its identity. In the Kingdom of the Lovers of God he explains that those seeking wisdom must flow forth on the waters to all the boundaries of the earth, that is, on compassion, pity and mercy shown to the needs of all men, must fly in the air of the rational faculty, and refer all actions and virtues to the honor of God. Thence through grace they will find an immense and boundless clearness bestowed upon their mind. In relation to the contemplative life, he held that three attributes should be acquired. The first is spiritual freedom from worldly desires, as empty of every outward work as if he did not work at all. The second is a mind unencumbered with images, inward silence, and the third is a feeling of inward union with God, even as a burning and glowing fire which can never more be quenched. His works, of which the most important were De Vera Contemplation, on true contemplation and De Septem Gratibus Amoris, on the seven steps of love, were published in 1848 at Hanover, also Reflections from the Mirror of a Mystic 1906 and Die Zierde der Geistelichen Hochzeit Veneration <inaudible> 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 After John's death in 1381, his relics were carefully preserved and his memory honored as that of a saint. After his death, stories called him the ecstatic doctor or divine doctor, and his views formed a link between the friends of God and the brethren of the common life, the ideas which may have helped to bring about the Reformation. When Gronendal Priory was suppressed by Joseph II in 1783, his relics were transferred to St. Gujuels, Brussels, where, however, they were lost during the French Revolution. John was beatified on 1 December 1908, by Pope St. Pius X. No authentic portrait of John is known to exist, but the traditional picture represents him in the canonical habit, seated in the forest with his writing tablet on his knee, as he was in fact found one day by the brethren, wrapped in ecstasy and enveloped in flames, which encircle without consuming the tree under which he is resting. There is a secondary school called Jan van Roosbray College in Laken near the Royal Palace of Belgium. In other works The epigraph of the 1884 novel A Rebors by Joris Karl Heismans has the following Ruizbroek quotation, I must rejoice beyond the bounds of time. Though the world may shudder at my joy, and in its coarseness know not what I mean. See also List of Latin nicknames of the Middle Ages, Doctors in Theology Evelyn Underhill's Ruizbroek Hendrik Monday <laughs>